What's up, Shoe Shop? It's time for another fantastic podcast. I have Aaron from Sanctuary Games here. This is brought to you by Gaddafi Media. And Aaron's a particularly neat dude. He is a gamer. He came from Richmond. We have tons of games around. He made a gaming cafe. And that is super dope because I'm a massive gamer myself. I have over 400 games on Steam. Most of them I haven't played. A huge board game collection myself, which I need friends to play in. Thankfully, now there's a place to actually find people like you that actually want to play games with you, which is fantastic. It's a bit of a sanctuary for gamers, and I absolutely love it. So you're from Richmond. I am, yeah. Why did you even come to Seminar? Uh, I came here, actually. Uh, my girlfriend, Anoop, is the co-owner of this. She took a nursing job here. Right. And uh, since I dragged her from Calgary to Vancouver, it was only uh, fair that I follow her from Vancouver to Seminar. To Seminar. And so you grew up a lot with gaming cafes where you lived, and you per- you frequented them yourself quite a lot. Yeah, back then it was all net cafes where we would go and play Warcraft 3 or Left 4 Dead. Or... Yes. Yeah, there wasn't anything like a board game cafe, but we wanted to do something that kind of brought people together and off the screen. So That is a really good idea. And your menu is really taking inspiration from those cafes, because you have a rose, well, you, you have rose in there. This would, which flavor is this? This is blackberry. Yeah. Blackberry, and this is lavender. Yeah. This is a lavender milkshake. That's a lavender milkshake, yeah. Where did the idea of, I want to have rose this and lavender and the traditional flavors as well, but like, that's really hint of a twist of a different. I like it. Yeah, well, growing up in a, a city with a bubble tea shop on every corner, right? You get to find some good ones. Taro, lychee are some of my favorites. Um, lychee, lychee's good. But uh, rose is my all-time favorite. If anybody ever had a rose... Milk tea on the menu, I would always get it. Always get the rose milk tea. Mm-hmm. I, I try the rose. It's very, it is rosy. It's it's very subtle. It's, I, I can't really describe it. Like you really have to taste it yourself to really to, to understand it. Yeah, they're all natural flavor derivatives, so it is derived from roses, and when your drink is derived from lavender, yeah. so it's there's not art, no artificial flavors, and that's why the milk tea is also the color of milk and tea. It's, there's no um, food coloring in it whatsoever. So. And you're going to be expanding your menu to like sandwiches, panini. It'll be a real cafe, have goodies and cookies. And... Yeah, that's going to start next week. So we have the panini press here. We're just working on not some, having greasy hands. Not having greasy hands for the board games, but still having a good sandwich. Uh, that's cool. How does your business model work? How does someone come in, rent a table, get a game, get a drink? How does all that work? Because people are like, well, that's probably going to cost me X dollars. It does cost X dollars, yeah. but it's not a high amount of X. So. Um, for three fifty an hour at any normal time of the day, you can come in, open or grab any of the board games on the wall. Without any open. additional charge? No, nope, just wow. open them up and play. They're all ready to play. They're all ready to sell as well, so it's also a board game store. We have multiple copies of things like Catan and Risk, and so we have some to play and some to sell. And then we have special rates, so if you bring a group of four or more, it goes down to two fifty an hour for everybody. Mm -hmm. And we're doing half price for seniors between ten and three and students between three and six as well. So it's a dollar seventy five for a student or a senior to come and play any game they like. That's really cool. Like that is extremely cheap. I I have so many friends that I want to play board games with, but we just can't find the place the we have to go to their house or my house, we have to clean up beforehand, you know. Make sure everything's tidy. Yeah, you can come here. I've already cleaned up beforehand. And, uh, and after us. You know, we've, got, um, we've got a limit of 30 people capacity, but we do have 36 seats available, so there should always be room to play. Yeah. That's good. So for someone who has played a lot of video games, why did you choose a board game shop? Well, all my favorite memories, none of them come from playing video games. They all come from fighting with my friends over Catan or fighting with my friends over Risk or somebody throwing over a chessboard when they there is something to say about being a gamer and just getting really into a game like and just be it being very fun to be just totally indulged in a game like there's three gentlemen behind us playing D. they're having a fantastically fun time no they're playing magic actually yeah. oh there's they yeah oh i thought they were playing dd my no. bad <laughs> what games do you tend to find you're attracted to most is it strategy games is it role-playing games is it well, for myself, strategy for sure. And I can tell you that uh, 15 years ago, maybe 16, a group of friends and I all went in and bought Catan and all of its current expansions. Wow. If I go to Richmond today, we still have our original box, our original pieces, and every score of every game track on the lid of the box. It's a, a massive scrawl of ticks with all of our names as we've played over the last uh, 
15. Close to two decades, yeah. Wow, that is... The cards are in a minor disrepair, and there's some pieces missing, but uh, we still have our original game from back when we were teenagers. That's really cool. Yeah, I saw a Game of Thrones Catan on your shelf there. Was the... That is so cool that they've actually expanded into Game of Thrones, like the pop culture. Yeah, and coming out uh, this week, it'll be here tomorrow, is going to be the brand new expansion, Catan Starfares, which is a reimagination of Catan in space, and you have rockets and settlements and their <laughs> alien colonies you can deal and trade with and it looks really fun so we're looking forward to playing that tomorrow yeah that is so cool so we picked out some games to show off of these you have played some and some of you haven't played some i've played but this is obviously one of your favorites is Catan, the settlers of Catan, the trade build settle yes yeah, so like, with its expansion so the base game for me we we outgrew it a long time ago but with mm -hmm. the expansions it becomes so much more in depth with so much more going on that you just can never get tired of playing it. So you, something you've played a lot, describe the game, how does one usually play it? Because I've only played it once and I've seen it played once. Yeah, so it's a, it's a resource gathering game and it might be the most popular game in the world outside of chess and Scrabble and those guys. And basically, it's a dice game as well. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to take your little settlement on this island here right. and you're trying to expand it. So all of the different resources, you can find wheat, wood, or brick, and sheep resources are used to expand your settlement as you race the other settlers of Catan to expand theirs. So there's strategy in trying to get places before other players. Mm -hmm. There's a whole lot of trading involved. You can trade to the bank or you can trade between each other and you can get into some pretty... Uh, and hopefully the bank's not dirty. Uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, yeah, you know, everyone's got that friend, right? Yeah, that's um, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, th there's a couple of cool dynamics. There's ports all around. There's a robber who, if anybody rolls a seven, they move a robber and steal a card from another player and cut off their resource supply on whatever number they've moved it to. Mm -hmm. So if you want to lose a friend in a hurry, all you have to do is uh, put that guy in them and uh, you, you don't have to hear from them for a week or two, right? So... Yeah, so th there's a lot of in-depth strategy. When you get into the expansions, the game kind of evolves, and there's um, pirates that are coming to blow up your cities, and you need knights to defend them, and wow. you have boats and exploration, and you can go to different islands. And... Wow, I didn't know there was that in-depth of the game. Oh, I mean, it was resource gathering. but Yeah, oh, it is. We've got a, a shelf of expansions, and they all change the dynamic of the game in their own way. So if you ever get tired of the original, you can pick up one of the... I think there's five different expansions now and that'll actually totally change how, other than the resource play. gathering, that stays constant, but the rest of it switches over to a... Yeah, like goals, missions, whatever it is, it just changes that up. Yeah, and seafarers, you're trying to explore far off islands before other players and cities and knights, you're trying to fend off invaders who will blow up your cities and put you way back in the game and... <laughs> Don't you... I, I hate when I'm playing a game and like it turns out like I'm the one that's definitely going to lose it because something really bad happened at the beginning of the game, which just upsets everything, and then everyone makes fun of you, and it's, yeah. a, it's a good time. It's, it is. Yeah. And what does my shirt say? Oh, classically trained. No, I got one that also says, um, uh, video, day, video games don't make me angry, lag does, but that can also um, go with board games as well. Yeah, you can get some bad dice rolls yes, for sure. Yeah. Like, this is not my fault. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Why dice? Why? Sometimes statistics don't come into play with the dice, it seems. Yeah. Yeah. But this is a game, The Resistance, that I've played a couple times and you haven't, right? That, yeah. The basic principle of this game is a bunch of people sit around, you all got random cards, and then some of you are with the Resistance, some of you are uh, with like the company. So the company's mission is to make sure that all the missions fail, and we have to discuss amongst ourselves who is the the rats. No. And we don't know anything, like uh, the, the the resistance doesn't know who is the actual rats are. We have to figure that out, and it's you have to do it by who who, pay, who fails and who passes a mission, and then you have to like eye contact. It's a real mind game. Okay. It is so much fun because you can get so angry at people like no you're the rat no i'm not no you're the rat no I'm the... you failed this mission no i didn't well, i've heard nothing but good things so, yeah. no it's it can get into a real heat it's like mario kart with your friends kicking each other heated mm. <laughs> good yeah i know it's it's a heck of a lot of fun but you have a very rare game right there it's very hard to come by yeah. why why is it hard to come by 
when it was released, it became so popular that on the original print run, it got back ordered for six months. And right. Because they can only print so many per print run, right. it's basically been on a permanent six month waiting list. Yeah. Wow. Now, we got really lucky. I suppose somebody canceled their order from it the same day that our opening order was shipping out. And the rep being the good guy that he is, he snuck it onto the truck for us. So we managed to get one. It's hard to find. You can find it online. Uh, most places are charging about $200 plus because of the rarity for it. Wow. You'll never, it's very hard to find it for MSRP. Uh, so we have one to play. We've got more coming in on the next print run, which should be sometime mid-December. So we should have inventory hopefully by Christmas. What, ex what kind of game is it? Why was it so ridiculously popular instantly? <clears throat> well, it's actually it's a really nice game. I've played it a bunch of times now. And mm -hmm. um, it's very, very non-competitive. You've got bird sanctuaries or bird habitats. Right. And you're just trying to fill your habitats with beautiful bird cards. Each bird card comes with uh, little text that'll teach you about the birds. It'll tell you what that type of rent does, its nesting habits, or maybe so something real knowledge. About it. Real knowledge, yeah. Wow, that looks like a beautiful game. It is, and you know any game that comes with its own bird feeder dice roller. Bird feeder dice roller. Yeah, I don't think you'll find one of these anywhere else. Of course, it's going to be hard to put together on camera, but... It slides in like that, and there's your dice roller. It's a, a little miniature bird feeder. So you just put your die in there, and it just falls down here, and that's your roll? Yeah, right here in the back. So being a... Oh, oh you actually get... There's a... What is that? Yeah. Worm, Worms, mice, fish. weed, fish. Yeah, you just pop them in the back. It rolls it down for you, and there's your food supply. There's your... That's actually really awesome. Isn't that cool? They, they put a lot of work into it. And then, yeah, there's a lot of thought that went into this. Just looking at the cards themselves, like there's so many, I don't know if the camera can see these here. Oh yeah. But so many really beautifully done oh, pieces of art on there. This one tells you these ducks really do whistle. It's called the black belt whistling duck. Okay. So there's a cool little fact for you. Yeah, so it's a, it's a really nice game. There's a lot of resource management. There's a whole bunch of different ways to get points. Okay, the, the scoring at the end takes in about six different factors. Thank you. With the, the factors that um, it takes in. So if you filled your sanctuary. Yeah, so different birds are worth points. Um, you're trying to lay a bunch of eggs in your sanctuaries as well. So the more eggs you have, so you get the more points well. you get at the end. Yeah, um, you have little challenges for each round. So there's a little round card. and. You have little challenges. They're they're separate, random every game. So it might be having eggs on a bird that nests in. So what do you think your trees. objectives are in the game? Yeah, for the four rounds, um, different birds will tuck either eat birds. There's a hawk that you can feed birds to, and every bird you feed it is a is worth a point at the end. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's it's really cool. It's uh, it's a fun little game. Yeah, no kidding. Fun, expensive little game. <laughs> well, it's uh, it's only three fifty an hour here, right? Yeah, no, I mean like if you buy it on eBay or something like, like that. Yeah, it's not cheap at the moment. But that's that's the sure. that's the best thing is that like people can come in, try out a game, maybe even buy the game themselves. But most importantly, like they don't have to buy it to to even play it. They just come in, rent it for four bucks, and. You're good. Uh, yeah. Buy a drink, have some fun. Well, we've actually seen it uh, quite a few times now. People have uh, came in to play a game and ended up walking out with it at the end of the night. Oh, really? Yeah. What, what kind of games are the most popular that people are picking up? Oh, well, Catan, obviously. We, uh, we sold out of that a lot faster than we thought. Ticket to Ride, we sold out of a lot faster than well, we thought. I've seen that played um, once. It looked like a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. You, you, yeah. say it's, you have to build your train the longest? Is that uh, you get little goal cards, so it'll, your goals will be build from New York to San mm. Francisco or build from Los Angeles to... Yeah, but then there's there's bonus points of like you, who has the longest train, who has this, who has the most cities and, and stuff can, like that. And you can cut off people's railroads and everything. And make, make enemies for the night, yes. And get in a fight, yes. 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 As, as gamers tend to be like, you blocked me, man. Why did you do that? You heard? Yeah. Do you, do you want help on the weekend moving your stuff or not? That's how friendships are forged and ruined. Huh? That's very true. <laughs> okay, Risk. This is one of my all-time favorites as well. Like, it's just a, a, a great strategy game. I probably have not played the... 
haven't played it to the extent of where you can with all like all the rules and uh, micromanaging and stuff like that, but it's definitely a game that I've played a lot with friends. Yes, I remember um, having games drag on for seven hours until three in the morning. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. Like, Risk is tons of fun, but it can last days. It can. Especially it can. If, like Monopoly. If you don't know how to play Monopoly right, it can last for days. That's a good family killer, Monopoly, yeah. Yeah, no risk. Uh, I think 90% of games of risk end when somebody's hungry and cranky and just throws the board or, mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. throws the game, right? You win, Aaron. I'm done. Yeah. You're done. That's it. I'm going to bed. Eat yeah. your damn nachos. Yeah, I've seen a couple of quick games, but uh, for the most part, they, they do go on for quite a while. So, But it is a, a lot of fun, a lot of strategy. I've lost a lot of games with bad dice rolls. And, but. Yeah, because when you're defending, obviously the dice defender has been an advantage yeah. Yeah. yeah so all of a sudden you have one one thing on that continent or that one little region and an army of 50 just can't get by that one dude because it's either better or equal to and he's like why it's can't, happened yeah why can't i i lost 20 units <laughs> but the cool part is it's happened in real life too with uh, that's very true odds stacked against the mm -hmm. against the country being invaded and you know victory to the yeah well 300 classic so Munchkins. Oh, this is a, a simple role-playing game that a lot of kids love. I mean, it's got great cartooning, but it's very, very simple. It's kind of relatable. Have you played much of it? I haven't, actually. Yeah, we had people in here playing the other day with um, the co-owner and Noob, mm -hmm. and they were all laughing and having a great time, so I imagine it can't be that bad of a game if uh, every no, five I mean, minutes I heard somebody cracking up in laughter. What I love about this game is how... Well, one, I can't get it open but how it relates to like so much high school stuff. Like everyone can, can relate to, to these cards and stuff like that and just like calling your teachers like monsters and, and, and whatever. The art is kind of but fun, yeah. Do you actually have a, a board for this? Because these things don't usually come with boards. Uh, no, they were just playing it as a card game. I don't think I saw any boards out on the table. Yeah, that's what I always wondered about this game is that it does have boards designed for it, but the main game doesn't come with a board. Hmm. I yeah, never really understood that. Sheriff of Nottingham. This is another game you haven't played, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. okay. This is one that I have. And the best part about this game is, is that it encourages you to make real-world deals. So you have five, six people around the table, and you all take turns being the sheriff of Nottingham. It goes clockwise or anti-clockwise, and you have to get your goods or contraband into the city. So you're the sheriff of Nottingham. I have a bunch of weapons in my bag that I want in because they're worth triple points. And you are not convinced that I'm telling the truth. I'm like, no, I have three apples. No, I'm, no, sir, I have, I have apples, not not weapons, apples. And you can, you can call my bluff and be like, okay, no. You pay me this dollar amount because of how the game works, or I can be like, Aaron, I'm going to give you five dollars Canadian right now to look the other way, and you're going to let me into your city. Hmm. And you actually have the option of saying yes or no, and that is in the game rules. Isn't that something? <laughs> that is. Better not let kids play, don't you? No. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no. <laughs> Keep that one off the shelf for us. As quickly this turns into a gambling house. <laughs> yes, no, we're not going to have that. <laughs> no, that sounds really neat, yeah? Yeah, it's like, I'm going to do your chores for a week if you... That's better. Yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah, okay, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll allow it. You allow right. chores. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Cards Against Humanity. I have never played it. Well, I have a couple times. But I know a lot of people enjoy this game. Yeah, it's very popular. Um, it's never been my type of humor myself. Mm -hmm. People are... Neither mine, but I've had a lot of people just giggle and giggle and giggle at cards. Oh, look at that combination. That's hilarious. How did that turn out? Yeah, I think my favorite part about this game is the, uh, the expansion I got. It's uh, called Crabs Adjust Humidity, and it calls itself a crappy little unofficial third-party expansion on the box. And it is playable with the original Cards Against Humanity cards that can be shuffled together and played together. <laughs> so that's my favorite part of it. It's not my type of game myself, but a lot of people have a lot of fun. So Yeah, you got it on the shelf for people to play. Yeah. And really, I can't wait to hear some of the laughter that people get out of this game. Yeah, okay. After all, the kids are going, of course. Uh, we've got a bunch that are off limits during hours when children are here. This yeah, is, this is a there you, you do have 18 plus 
games like this is there is an 18 plus version of this game yeah and this even one, in uh, general this is kind this of an adult 17 game anyway. plus, so. yeah we do we do limit the play of adult games with profanity and any kind of content that a, a kid wouldn't want to hear or a parent wouldn't want to hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a family-friendly atmosphere. Yes, we, we do limit those games until after the children are gone, for sure. Yeah. Well, that's good, isn't it? Because yeah. um, I know myself, I get heated when I when I start losing games. Yeah. Over and over, it gets to you. No, it's, uh, we call this Sanctuary Games, and it does need to be a safe, enjoyable place for everybody. So. Oh, that's actually a good name, though. Because you, you have a lot of kids' games up front. Like, these are the adult sort of teen games. Yeah. But you have a bunch of like Jenga and you know, Monopoly, like, Ten Below, Blue. I think we just sold our uh, last Super Rhino Hero Battle. What is Super Rhino Hero Battle? I have battle? no idea, but it looked it was the brightest box I've ever seen. You could uh, it was bright purple rhinoceros with bright yellow background. And, yeah. I'm very curious of what that game is all about. Yeah, I would have liked to play it. We were playing Hungry Hungry Hippos on our opening night. That's awesome. A lot, yeah. a lot of strategy. A lot of strategy. Yeah, yeah there's like, <laughs> you slam that hammer down. I don't think I've ever seen a bunch of adults have so much fun with a board game than when we played Hungry Hungry Hippo. Oh, really? Yeah. It wasn't even like a bunch of kids. No, it no, it was, it was us. Yeah, it was, That's yeah. amazing. No, it was a bunch of adults around 11.30 at night playing Hungry Hungry Hippos. And... How old are you guys are usually open to? <laughs> yeah. That's not bad. I mean, as you know, gamers are typically up late, so yeah, it makes sense to be open till 10. And you're usually open at 10, 11? 10 to 10, yeah. That's cool. All right, we have one more game on the table. No, that's a good game. Pandemic. I've never played it. Pandemic is the only uh, cooperative game that you've seen here. That's the Resistance is cooperative. So in Pandemic, the two to seven players are trying to fight the spread of four terrible diseases across the world. So you're playing against the game. You're playing against the game. So I you, love games like that. So you have different um, character cards. You get dealt randomly at the beginning. So you might be the medic, or you might be the quarantine specialist, or you right. might get dealt the researcher. Right. So every player has a unique thing that they can do to help prevent the spread of the diseases. As the diseases spread, you're rushing from city to city, either by driving or by flight to get to where the diseases are getting worse and try to contain them before massive outbreaks occur and you lose the game. So as you're fighting to research the cures for the diseases, you're also fighting to maintain them from getting out of control, which can happen very quickly. So it's a, it's a lot of fun. Uh, you work together, so there's not much in fighting. There are characters like uh, the dispatcher who can on his turn, move other people's characters to try to help them get where they need there's to a, go. There's a lot of depth. It's a really cool game, and it only takes about five minutes to learn, which is awesome. That is really cool. I play a couple games that you play against the game. Like, uh, the Island is one of them. Okay. So you, it's like a sinking island, and you have to find parts on the island to get off the island, and it, you only have a certain amount of turns to be able to do everything that you need to do yep. until the, the island is gone. Yeah, yeah, no, it's probably a very similar idea. You, once you're out of cards, you lose mm. the game. Yeah, that's if it. If diseases outbreak too many times, you lose the game. If, uh, well, I forget the last way to lose the game. There's a there's bunch a lot of people to lose a game. You can lose the game pretty quick. Yeah, we, we normally lose the game. But. Yeah, because this isn't the only type of games that you have. You have a lot of card games, like Yu-Gi-Oh!, you have Magic, you have... Pokemon. Card, like, lots. Yeah. Yeah. Have you played much of those yourself? I played a lot of Magic myself, yeah. Tons of Magic. Tons of Magic yeah. in my youth, yeah. I only played Yu-Gi-Oh! So I went to the library, and my friends had decks, so I used their decks. And this one buddy, Jeremy, Blue Eyes White Dragon. That mofo had a dragon deck that would just destroy anyone that would come up against him because he's like, oh, look at that! Dragon Whistle, Dragon Whistle, Dragon Master. Oh, look, I have four Blue Eyes White Dragons! Ah! That's one of my... One of the things with trading card games, it's a lot of the time whoever spent the most money wins. So Play to win. My oh. favorite uh, yeah. format is the draft, which we do every Friday night, where each player is given three packs of random cards. They get passed around the table, every person taking one card per turn, per pass. Right. So you end up with a very similar card pool. You end up with totally random stuff. You all paid the same $18. Then you build your best deck you can out of these cards that you drafted at the table. And then you play tournament style together. So it's totally even playing ground. It's a lot of fun. You get to keep a bunch of cards at the end. They're That's cool. Surprising. Yeah. So for people who just don't have decks or don't have the really knowledge to build decks, you have pre-made ones? 
Yeah, I've got a, a collection of uh, our own decks here to teach people to play. Um, Wizards of the Coast, who makes magic, is sending us a bunch of decks as well to give to players looking to get into the game. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, we're, we've signed up with uh, Konami for Yu-Gi-Oh! tournaments. We're sanctioned with Wizards of the Coast for magic tournaments. Uh, we do have a Pokemon League organizer who's signing people up, so we're going to have promo cards and promotional material for Pokemon events, which happen every Sunday, which have been getting bigger and bigger as really? go on. Yeah. So you got Pokemon events right now, you're registered for a bunch of stuff. What are your plans for actual tournaments? Uh, well, we're going to start running tournaments when we start to get a, a couple older players for Pokemon. Um, we can we can break them up. Uh, we I mean, where Ash should be aged right now, like in his thirties. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, well, they're they're serious about that. Um, Ash uh, at one point wished that his journey with Pikachu would never end, and that's why he always loses at the end of it. So his journey never ends, and that's why he never ages because something granted him the wish is a cool theory. Ah, that is a neat theory. If you want to know why he's been uh, eight years old for thirty-five years or twenty-five years, <laughs> whatever. That is. that is the uh, the leading. Uh, Crowd theory out there. Huh. But uh, we do magic tournaments every Friday. Uh, we're setting up a day to do Yu Gi Oh! It might be every Monday. And uh, Pokemon, we have the meet every Sunday. For Pokemon, what time is your meet? Uh, right now we're doing 12 to 4. It's mostly younger kids. So we're doing it right after lunch and until dinner time. And it's, we've had huge success with it. There have been a lot of kids. And there's been a lot of friendships made. A, a couple of the, the parents told us that the kids never talked to anyone, very shy. And by the end of it, there they are teaching another kid how to play. Or, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's been a lot of fun. Get a so. nice little bond going. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, I can imagine that there's going to be a lot of good friendships forged in these walls. Yeah, we would hope so, yeah. yeah. So what, what games on yourself that you have not played are you looking forward to playing so far? Well, I really want to try um, <laughs> Fans of Caledonia. It's got a very uninteresting box, but I hear it's a very excellent game. The Trail at House on the Hill I want to try. I've seen a bunch of people cracking up in here over Red Dragon Inn. They're going to meet every Wednesday from now on. So, Red Dragon Inn is a very... Uh, oh! It's like uh, Dungeons and Dragons characters basically have come back from their adventure and they're all drinking at the bar. And I guess the premise of the game is to not get drunk. In-game drunk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In-game yeah, yeah. drunk. Um, <laughs> and try to get the other ones in-game drunk oh, yeah, to, to get them to lose. So I guess you have your... Your fortitude, which is your ability to have more drinks, and your, your drunkenness, and if they ever meet, then you're out of the game. I guess it's uh, under the table, kind of, you know. But, uh, yeah, that one looks really fun. Um, another one I really wanted to try was that Mysterium. I think that looks so cool. Oh, that does look really cool. Do you know what it's about? No. She's like, that's a really cool box. I want to check looks, it out. As far as I can tell, somebody plays a ghost, right? and the other players are trying to figure out who killed the ghost, what happened, why the ghost is there. Okay. Yeah, you, you randomly get assigned the ghost and that player, I guess, doesn't speak. There's a best of my understanding, but it sounds really neat. No, I love the mechanics of what four game adventures come up with. You're like, oh, that's that's different. That can play something completely different. I, I like that. Yeah, and more come out every, uh, every week. I get an order or get a memo of new games coming out, new releases. And no, really? There's hundreds of them. Have you played... Have you... Made any board games yourself? No. I'm, I'm not the creative type. I like other people's creativity. Yeah. I, I started making a board game. It was a card game. It was about growing yeah. cannabis. <laughs> so it was like. It's legal now. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I mean, you had your, your grow rooms and stuff like that, and then you had your opponent's grow rooms, and you sort of had to infect each other's and then fend off black mold or white mold or bugs or something like that. Or you have special sprays to up the, the mount, or you'd rip someone off, or spy holes. It was really neat. I never actually completed it. I, I started working on it about three years ago. Yeah, I should actually bring that by to there you go. to uh, take a look at. It. It's a good province for that theory or for that theme. It's not my thing, but no, fair enough. <laughs> no, that's actually kind of a thought now. Is that this isn't just a place for gamers to game? It could be also a place for gamers to invent and test and try and learn and yeah, why not? Yeah, A B tests, sort of all that alpha beta. Yeah, that's really cool. Huh. Yeah, between that and our operational cafe, everybody's like their milkshakes, right? Everybody's like their bubble tea. And yeah, because well, your bubble tea, you're huge on your bubble tea. 
Yeah, so our bubble tea, we have milk tea, which I drink. I'm not a... Yeah. I don't like chewing my drink myself. I, I get the appeal and the bubble tea is nice, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all, it's all natural and it's a traditional style. So instead of being made with uh, shaken powder and water, it's made with real tea, real milk, and all natural flavors. So. Yeah, I saw your flavor collection. There's a couple of cool ones back there. Like lavender? Yeah. Rose? If you haven't tried a rose milkshake, you have to try a rose milkshake. I will definitely have to try a rose milkshake. I tried one of your rose uh, milk teas. And yeah, it tastes like, I, I never really tasted rose before, but yeah, it's exactly how I imagined rose would ever taste. Yeah, normally you don't go around chewing on your rose petals. Yeah. Normally you give them to somebody. And, uh, Throw it away. Whatever. Yeah, exactly. So where do you want to go with this business? You're going to expand to something, because I'm sure you got plans, like your kitchen, one thing, game selection, two things. Yeah, so we're seeing, um, seeing how it goes for now. We rented a rather small space for the amount of things that we're doing. Um, as we grow and expand, we will move to a bigger location. We might add some different aspects as well. Originally, we were going to do a, a non-alcoholic pool hall, foosball, an air hockey table oh, really? in a separate room in a different building. But we decided to start off a bit smaller here. Do you still have plans for that then? We could do it in the future, yeah. It's one thing we, the main thing we open this for is to give people in Salmon Arm something to do. Something fun to do. Even late at night. That's like late at night to do. The only times I hear complaints are like, there's nothing to do in this town. I tried to go to Canadian Tire when I moved here. It was closed when I got there at five. <laughs> <laughs> If a town you can't even go to Canadian Tire at 10 o'clock, then what is it, right? That, that's so. very true. I think our Uptown Tim Hortons is no longer 24 hours either. I believe... No, it's not. I tried to go through the drive-thru after yeah. getting off work at the bar and uh, no. Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, the only one that's open 24 hours, I think, is McDonald's. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're not open 24 hours, but... Um, yeah, so uh, we wanted to stay open a bit later to try to bring a little bit of life to downtown and... You know, so many people work. It's not a nine to five world anymore. You know. No. My girlfriend yeah, works seven in the morning till seven at night, or seven at night till seven in the morning, and yeah, those people either lose out completely of a social life, or yeah. try and make one or two hours here or there work. Yeah. So a lot of people don't get off work at five anymore. So closing at six just. Uh, How many? Or what age groups are you finding that are coming in? You know, it's been pretty diverse from the, the kids coming in on Sunday to learn and play Pokemon. We've been teaching them, having little workshops on how to build their decks. Yeah, I saw you in the paper there. That was yeah, really neat. Yeah, I saw that in the paper, yeah, yeah. Like Pokemasters and Salmon Armor or something like that? Yeah, yeah. So they were all between 6 and probably 12. Um, Friday Night Magic, we have people from probably about 12 years old to 40 years old in here playing. And last night we had some people in here and they're mid 50s late 50s here playing robo rally so what's robo rally robo rally is a very um, simple confusing game. game okay what do you do all right so in robo rally <laughs> it was actually a lot of fun we, i played it on and off with them through the night okay so, so it comes with a bunch of little tracks and you're trying to move your little robot character you get you get these move cards so you can move two spaces go back a space turn right turn right so you're trying to program your robot based on the cards in your hand. So you'll tell it turn right, turn right, go forward two, turn left, go forward one, kind of. Okay, um, so programming it. Yeah, so while you're trying to pre-program it to go, these tracks will move you along. They're like conveyor belts. So if you land on one of those, it's going to shove you one direction or another, maybe turn you around somehow. And the other robots are also moving as they try to get to, to little goalposts. So... They fire laser beams if they're ever facing each other. They shoot at each other and do damage. <laughs> and that gives you less moves on your next turn until you repair your damage. Um, if they, they can shove each other. So if this player's card lets them go first and they push you off course, mm -hmm. your, your pre-programmed course still goes off the exact same as you planned it. It's just your two spots in the wrong direction. You can end up in the middle of nowhere. So there, it, it was a lot of fun, actually. It was uh, a nice, simple game. The turning confused me a little bit, but... A lot of these games are kind of confusing until you play it at least once and you're like, okay, I get it. Yeah, and it comes with uh, all sorts of cool little figurines and there's, uh, about, oh, I don't know, there's endless expansions to this game so that we can bring in. And... Oh, I'd imagine there are. I would think that there's lots of figurines that have been printed and made. Oh yeah, different boards, different ability cards. It was a lot of fun. It was. So your pool hall thing, the original idea for this. Yeah. You're 
thinking about doing that still? Or is it like, I'm gonna, obviously you're going to focus on this, you need to make this work, but is that still something you want to play with in the back of your mind? Like, hmm, pool hall, foosball, alcohol. No alcohol. No still. alcohol no, still. No, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you, you'd be like a traditional sort of younger gaming house, like pool, yeah. foosball. When I grew up, we had a place in Richmond called East Five. Okay. And it was gang ridden half the time. It was nice. Yeah. But it, it was safe because, you know, everybody there could, uh, you know, there, there was going to be no, there were too many dangerous people there to have be any problem, basically, right? Okay. Um, but you could go there, they had a net cafe, pool tables, arcade, right, bubble tea, everything else. And you could go, I remember one night my car broke down nearby at 2 a.m. And mm -hmm. I went and hung out at East Spot until 4 a.m. They were open until 4, until a buddy of mine could come get me. Wow. Right, so, I mean, it was just such a cool, and we would all kind of congregate there. And, Right, so we want, I wanted to create the same experience of having that place to go for people here, basically. Yeah, so you're, you're trying to bring a, like, a lot of your experiences, your positive gaming with experience. Well, minus, experience the, minus, the part, right? yeah, minus the gangs part. Yeah, minus the gangs part. Yeah. I mean, maybe you got a game here we can simulate that, but yeah, yeah minus the gangs part. No, that's, that's really cool, bringing a part of you to Salmon Arm because it's something that you enjoyed and you see a need for it and you went for it. Yeah, no, so that's it should really be a lot of fun. That's that's really cool. So where the where can the people find you online? Uh, either Facebook at uh, Sanctuary Games SA or Instagram at Sanctuary Games SA, and we're developing a website right now, which uh, I don't have a URL for yet. No, that's all good. And where are you located in the seminar? We're at uh, 171 Hudson Avenue, right across from the Hungry Panda, and right beside the Candy. The Candy Bowl. That's an interesting place too. Yeah. <laughs> I can see you guys teaming up there. Just... We've had some discussions, yeah. Really? That's, yeah. that's really cool. Huh. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. I can't wait to actually play some of these games. This looks like a really cool game. It is. It really is. And Risk and Pandemic. <clears throat> I need to find a good, good group to play this with. There's a group in town. They were in here last week. They play it every week. They play it every week. Man, I'll have to get those details from you. Alright guys. <clears throat> Check this out. It is, it's really cool. If you love video games and a bit of coffee, do you have coffee? Absolutely. I yes, do. you have coffee. Of course this man has coffee. It's a cafe. Duh. All right, guys. Have a good day. Peace. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Your attention means the world to me. Please, please, please share this. Pass it on. And tell your friends it's the best podcast in the Shushua. <laughs> Let me know what you thought. Have a good day.